All right. Shalom. Shalom. Rastafari. I want you to check this out. This is about like hip hop and rap music. You got to check out these brothers here. Um, John Kevin again. All right. <laughs> Your words shall distill like dew, like rain upon your grass, and like your showers on your plants. When I and I know they call aloud the name of Jah, I and I shall respond, praise the Jah, Rastafari, Haile Selassie, I and I, Jah Arena, whose work is for I am a perfect and who weighs off for I am a John, a faithful God who does no wrong, righteous and true. It's Jah, Rastafari, Haile Selassie, I, travel through the world, king of all in this game. Oh, well. yeah, these I knew Bia. I knew Bia. This is from Ja Kebra Nagas. God Saga of the Lion Nation. From a group I think I knew Bia. Leave some brother in if I recall them correctly. I was working with the Federation, perhaps they still are. Hopefully they're still doing music, but this this particular album right here that we just let you hear the intro of it. This is a very you know, this is this is some real good hip hop. If you want to talk about hip hop and rap music and performing in Africa, because we put up that link about Nas and and Farrell speaking on why um you know, black, African American, US based artists so forth and so on, don't perform in Africa. And so far we've got a lot of a lot of comments and some very, very interesting comments. That's that's what I originally wanted to record this kind of follow up to that because this week or these um these seven days since the thirteenth, you know, since the thirteenth uh Shabbat, the thirteenth Sendet in our annual solar, lunar, loony solar, Hebraic cycle of Torah portion readings and feedings. And we still have some of the information up on the dry erase board concerning uh, Shemot. Shemot is the 13th uh, Sabbath in the cycle of the Torah portion readings and feedings. And now that came on Friday the 13th, actually Friday the 13th. So we thought this is very interesting. This is some would say weird, you know, or others might say it's prophetic. The fact that there's this correspondence of the 13 in the sabbatical readings and feedings and Friday the 13th, and then you can just go and, you know, mash the math on the whole 13 and New World Order, and then we could take it to a higher height and look at it from an Ethiopic or black perspective. But the comments that we um, received in the back and forth reasoning about um, Africa and African Americans, uh, black Americans, where we're at right now, the whole New World Order. And we thought that was so very interesting. But in the preparation for this, uh, this follow up, you know, and for this video, since we hadn't posted a video, um, one of our live reasonings for a couple of days. Partially, it's because we've been under a bout of spiritual attack, um, and no doubt many of y'all have also been under um, spiritual attack from within, you know, within your own head and heart, and what you got to go through, and what you've been through, and who you are, and from outside, from the world, from so-called friends and so-called families, past, present, and you know, I mean. So in the meditation, our own personal meditation, there's a lot of different points of uh, reasoning and lecture that we wanted to follow up on, particularly this sabbatical reading and feeding concerning Shemot. We touched on it briefly a couple of days ago. And, of course, there's more to the story, the, the book of Exodus. I mean, but just putting it all together, bringing it all together in your head and heart as you go about your day-to-day and your way-to-way and whatever you got to do. If you're like us who seek to remember the Sabbath 
and to keep it set apart, then the reasoning from the Sabbath, in spite of whatever other kind of work or whatever else you've got to do in the world, when you have a couple of moments to meditate and you see what's going on in the world and your own personal life, you recognize as a reality of a spiritual warfare. So this is, once again, catching up on, you know, the main theocratic and the main doctrinal and the main teachings of his imperial majesty of Haile Selassie. One thing we want to say first and foremost is to Brother Heights, something you had said a couple of days ago in a response to this video really had us, you know, really had us thinking and we wanted to say, actually post just an amen, an amen to what you had said and no doubt you will check this out and perhaps we can reason a little bit more on that but what you said right here um <laughs> i'm just reading it some of it of course the senses probably won't even mind you know um won't even mind it so forth they might mind it if we are getting too conscious you know we're cursing and we're talking shit and act like niggas you know they let us act like niggas that's entertainment but we start you know, cursing about evil and then getting our acts together, then of course, you know, then there'd be an issue about sensitivity and so forth and so on. But I think he said something to the effect, our uh, height said, said something about you boot licking, buck dancing, shoe shuffling, bamboozled, breastfed, Negro. Everyone but us is investing in Africa. Everyone but us. I thought that was one of the very beautiful points. I mean, yes, some may take issue about the language, so forth, but really it's probably more about the point because the main point is very clear, no profanity in it. Everyone but us is investing in Africa. Everyone but so-called African Americans and so-called blacks in the Americas and the Caribbean is investing in Africa because, because straight up, we is fucking bitches. Fuck this man. I'm tired of fucking niggas and they chicken shit behavior. Stop being such fucking pussies. Yeah, I guess in the Nas and the the Pharaoh, the Pharaoh, um, I'm thinking, you know what a Pharaoh is. You know what a Pharaoh is? Look it up. You understand? Look up a Pharaoh, Pharaoh, Pharaoh. Not Pharaoh. You know, we we blacks have to start articulating better, you know what I mean, than we are because these languages, ancient, past, and present, the key is, you know, the key is um, education, you know. So that's another point we want to touch on too. But the point right there is everyone but us is investing in Africa. Now, about the spiritual warfare. See, the spiritual warfare that many of us in our personal lives are engaged in or are beset by, in addition to the heavily burdened souls, because we all are souls, and to some degree, more or less, we're heavily burdened by our own doings or wrongdoings and by the wrongdoings of others, and it's caught up in this confusion, caught up in Babylon. And we want to reckon, uh, recommend recommend and hopefully have ones recognize the importance of this spiritual warfare. And this spiritual warfare begins, first of all, in each of us individually, in each individual I. First thing is each individual I must seek to align themselves with the Most High. You know, with the Most High. A lot of time, people are looking either for organizations or they're looking for groups of folks to hang with so that they can, you know, fall back instead of step forward. And um, this is one of the reasons why we haven't, like, said, okay, everybody join this, and we're going to do this and that, uh, because we've been through all of that already, and we have to ask ourselves, why hasn't that really worked out and changed anything? For example, in this interview um, with uh, Nas and uh, Farrell, when they're giving these reasons or their reasonings, um, some say excuses, be it as it is, for um, either not going to Africa or, like we said, there's, a, there's other brothers and sisters who also made some comments on this page. This page is a beautiful page, you know, and I can feel the love, <laughs> as they say, on and through this page because we're all frustrated by the inertia 
in the so-called movement. What happened to the movement? The movement has ground to inertia. And that's because the bigger issues, you know, and the bigger context we haven't dealt with, our so-called leaders. Isn't this the most interesting thing? And this is a point aside, but it's also a point that someone else, hopefully brother, sister, or someone else can follow up with it and keep the discussion going on this point because it's a very important point that we as black folks – 